A few days ago, I was going through a flash drive that had files on it that were more than 15 years old, probably the oldest files that I still actually have. And that got me thinking, how old can files actually be? And this opened a rabbit hole of so many more questions like, what is a file really? Is it the information that's inside of the file or is it the digital representation of it on a computer somewhere? If we go with the first answer, then I guess we could say that a PDF of a really old book or maybe this picture of the very early universe would be our oldest file. So let's consider the oldest digital representation of information. As far as what's on the internet goes, I found this FTP directory with some GIFs that dated back to July of 1988. And unsurprisingly, the GIFs are of anime. These actually might be the oldest GIFs that are on the internet, considering that the file format GIF was only created one year before these were. This is the first GIF ever made, by the way, but I have no clue if there's an old FTP server somewhere with older timestamps of it. Now, computers, and by extension files, are much older than the internet is, so there's a good chance that the real oldest file in existence isn't actually connected to any public network and is just sitting on the hard drive of an old PC or a long forgotten floppy disk. And assuming that the file hasn't been destroyed by bit rot, or at least if its timestamp header is still intact, then that might be considered the oldest file in existence. So without being able to see this file for ourselves conclusively, we can speculate about what it might be. TAR files come to mind because this program was originally designed to archive files to magnetic tape, which is a storage technology that was originally developed back in the 1920s and was used for data storage starting in the 50s. The TAR program that creates TAR files as we know them today was first introduced in Unix version 7 in the year 1979. But this wasn't the first Unix TAR archiver. That award goes to a program called TAP, which was the tape backup program in first edition Unix released in 1971. But surely there's even older file formats. ASCII is an encoding format for text that was created in the early 60s. If encoding format just sounds like gibberish to you, then think of it like a translation table that tells computers, hey, when you see this sequence of ones and zeros, it's an uppercase A, and this sequence is a lowercase b. And there's lots of control characters to mark where the beginning and end of files and paragraphs are and other non-text characters that are included in the ASCII set. So one of the more practical answers to our question probably lies around the invention of ASCII, a plain text file that is encoded in one of the earliest forms of ASCII that has been backed up to different storage mediums over the years but hasn't been modified would probably be the oldest file there is. But what about even older files? Computers existed before ASCII did. The whole point of ASCII was to create an American and broader English speaking standard or text files to be used in different computer systems. Other forms of encoding existed before, like Morse code, which actually predates computers. Now, Morse uses dots and dashes for character encoding, so it's a binary system, which means that it can be translated directly to the zeros and ones that computers use internally. So you could theoretically use a raw binary file to write a Morse code message to and maybe use a sequence of zeros or ones to indicate where the beginning of your message actually starts in order to prevent confusion for someone trying to read this around file headers or hell. If you don't need file types or encoding standards, then maybe you don't even have to worry about that stuff and you can just start dumping out your Morse code. But does raw binary data actually count as a file? If it does, then why not include punch cards? Sure, they're physical instead of digital, but there's a good chance that in a government or a military building somewhere, there is a program and data that is still being used today that was originally created on punch cards. And who knows, it might still be stored in its original punch card form as well, but as far as the digital backup of that program goes, wouldn't it make sense for that file's creation date on the computer to match 
when the punch cards were first created. So the real answer to our question is going to come down to the file system limitations on the computer we're using. Because at the end of the day, that is what's telling us how old a file actually is, and it can also be arbitrarily modified to whatever the limitations of this file system is. Now on Linux and other Unix-like systems, the oldest creation date for a file is gonna be December 13th, 1901. And this is due to constraints with Unix time, which counts the number of seconds that have gone by since the Unix epoch. And this number of seconds is stored in a signed 32-bit variable. Now, December 13th, 1901, just so happens to be the furthest number of seconds you can count backwards from January 1st, 1970, which is the date of the Unix epoch, given the signed 32-bit limitations. But January 19th, 2038 is the furthest forward you can go. And that's where we get the year 2038 problem from, which will cause future systems that are still tracking time this way to suddenly overflow and think that the current time is in 1901, which as you can imagine is gonna cause all kinds of problems and could already be causing problems. It's fairly common for mortgages, for example, to last a few decades. So if you applied for a 30 year loan in say 2009, that end date might have overflowed in a database somewhere already if the engineers responsible for it haven't updated the underlying software. Since we have 64-bit systems now, the leading solution to the 2038 problem is to just switch to storing Unix time in a signed 64-bit integer, which would take 292 billion years to overflow and can go pretty much just as far back in the past, which means at that point, we could technically have files with a creation date that would claim to be older than the universe itself. But what about on Windows? I mean, after all, it's the most popular operating system for personal computers, and it's not Unix-based, or really based at all. So what creation date constraints do we have over there? Well, Windows uses file time, which is a 64-bit value that represents the number of 100 nanosecond intervals that have elapsed since 12 a.m. on January 1st, 1601. And if you're wondering why this date was chosen for the Windows epoch, it's because that was the first date of the first cycle of the Gregorian calendar, which is a whole other rabbit hole if you want to go down it, but... I actually think that the Windows approach to keeping time is really interesting and might actually be better than the Unix approach. Of course, what the Windows devs really benefited from here, though, was better technology since they came up with this approach later on than the original Unix programmers on systems that had comparably way more memory. So they could use a 64-bit integer to store time without much fuss, and since they made it an unsigned value, they can actually count forward a lot higher since they don't need to use up one bit to represent a positive or negative integer on the counter. The Windows Epoch is also set far back enough to catch way more important documents and files that you might want to digitize. You could preserve the first edition of the Bill of Rights with its original creation date and even journals from people that settled at Jamestown. But I'm sure that there's some older documents out there with relevance today in older countries, especially the ones that have been around for over a thousand years. Comment below whatever you think that document could be. So in conclusion, the oldest file that you can have on a computer depends on what operating system you're using. But when 64-bit Unix time becomes the standardized measurement, your oldest document could be older than time itself. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch and accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount store-wide at checkout when you pay a Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.